Sometimes the impossible happens. The eternal clouds break up and the starry sky is appearing. A perfect opportunity to have a first light with my Ascar 400 to test the crazy idea of the piggyback and how it all went down in this video. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sasha from Switzerland, so grüezi miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. So let's split this video in two parts. First, how well did my idea with the piggyback go? Second, how well did the Ascar perform? So when it comes to the piggyback, I stated in my last video that I wanted the Ascar 400 to ride on top of my CPC 800. So I installed a dovetail in the middle of the CPC 800 and put my ASCAR 400 on top of it. I put some extra weights below and I was able to balance it so-so. Meaning, from an angle to about this to this, it was perfectly balanced, but as soon as it would overshoot or go too low, it would actually come out of balance. But given that the horsehead nebula which I wanted to shoot was in this preferred angle, it should be okay. So to your question, how did it go? I can give you two answers. First answer, I got a picture, so it must have been gone great. Second answer, I ordered a mount, which arrives Thursday. So probably it didn't go too well. So what happened? I think problem number one, have a look at my guiding. I got an RMS of about four, and before it was around two. So my guiding got massively worse. And while an RMS of two is not brilliant, for the Ascar 400, it would have been good enough. But with a four, no, thank you. So when it goes to the dual narrowband filter, I shot about 40 exposures, and for this picture, I could use 20. The others, they were simply unusable because of the guiding. But beside that, there were some other issues. The CPC 800, it's not a small scope, but still, the space is limited on top of it. I already have my Telrad, I already have my guiding scope, and in the middle now, I had my FRA 400, and it was just like everything got in the way. So I had to put my Telrad, as you can see here, in front, which made it really hard to look through it. With my guide scope, I even had to replace the screw. You can see that here, that it actually still fit in the position I had to put it to. And still, it was pretty hard actually to put the FRA in the middle in a way that I could still rotate it. And then the whole thing put together did not fit in my cover anymore. So I would have to buy a new cover. So at the end it was like, yeah, you can force it to make it work somehow. But is it a good solution? No, not at all. And then we come also back what I discussed last time, that every night here is really precious. And so now that I have two telescopes, actually to make use of that and to use both at the same time for shooting is really a very attractive perspective. At the moment I just ordered mount, but I did not order the camera yet. So one step at a time, that's also something that I learned in the last year, that it's actually a good thing not to overwhelm you with a lot of new equipment. So let's go now to the second topic, the FRA 400. And we will go in a second to Pix Inside, and I will show you in detail what I got. But just as a short sum up, for that this is only 20 times 180 seconds. I'm really, really happy with this picture. It really makes me excited what's possible when I take this more serious, I have a better mount, I have more time to shoot. So definitely a good start. There is only one concern that I have, and you might already see it. Here, and here, and here, and here, and that's halos. They're quite massive. And I don't think it's the filter because the Antlia ALPT, it's known for that it doesn't have a halo problem. And when I looked at it and we see it that in a second on PixInside, 
On the Antlia as well as on the Optolong L Pro, which I use for the stars, I had the halos. So my assumption is that it's the scope who produces them. And I've also read in some forum posts that other people have the same issue. Now, is this a huge issue? I don't think so. It's for me no reason to, to send it back, to ask for replacement. I think that's manageable. I just have to be aware. I think I have to mitigate it with the star shooting with even shorter exposure times. And then also in the processing, look for methods how I best get these halos out. But that's just something to consider in the future. And also I believe that with a better guiding, that might also help. Because when the stars get smaller, also the halos get smaller. But let's now have a detailed look at PixInsight. Okay, and here we are in PixInsight. So let's look now at a few different stages and exposures. So this is a single exposure made with the Optolong L Pro. 40 seconds, I do this for the stars. So the nebula here is only very faint visible. It's more about getting good stars. So I made two previews, the one here, Alnitak, and we see actually that it's nicely resolved. Also this little star right beside Alnitak. Also these ones, they look also very round. Now here in the preview two again, we see various stars, but we also see here the halo around this one. For the rest, it looks quite nice. Let's have now a look at this here. This is done with the aberration inspector. So we see here samples from the outer parts of the picture and one from the middle. And what you can see, even with the rather bad guiding that I had, the stars are mostly round. If you look here, these stars, they look very round. They have a little bit of an egg shape because again, with an RMS of three to four, that's unavoidable. But it's definitely not about the scope. This is what you still see. If it's not 100% round, this is the guiding issue that will be resolved soon. Um, but from, a, from what the scope offers, it's absolutely great. So let's look now at the two stacked pictures. They are right from AstroPixel processor. Nothing done, I just did an unlinked stretch here to get the greenish hue away, but otherwise nothing done yet. Again, I think star quality all over the picture, very nice. But again, looking at some here of the larger stars, we see very clearly the issue with the halos. We have it here, we have it here, and we have it here. And this is now with the Optolong. So let's see how it looks like with the Antlia. And with the Antlia, it seems to have a little bit of different characteristic, but it's also there. And we see that nicely when we zoom in. But again, you know, this is really cherry picking. The other thing, if you look at the resolution of the nebula, if you look at the star quality, there's no spikes. So they look really, really nice. So this all brings us here to the final picture, which again, giving the guiding error, given only 20 pictures times 180 seconds, this gives an hour of exposure time, looking at all the nebulosity that it actually shows. I think it's, it's really a good start. It's just a start, but a good start. Okay, and we're back. So let's sum the whole thing up. Piggyback, from my point of view, not a good idea. The CPC is a strong scope, but it has limits, and especially the guiding suffers. When we talk about the FRA 400, so far, so good. I'm very happy with the result. The halos, as stated, we have to see how to deal with it. So I'm very excited what to come. If you want to follow me and see the picture that I produce with the ASCAR 400, I will publish them on my channel on Instagram, on Astrobin, and if you want to have more background information and hear the stories behind the pictures, then my Patreon page is the perfect place to go. Link is in the description below. And when we are already talking about Patreon, I would like to say a big thank you to all my Patreons. Without them, this channel would not be possible. See you next time and clear skies. Thank you.